Hi, this is someone in the plate heat exchange who is often seen as a grueling task and is avoided. For most of the time you can get away with cleaning it via CIP, occasionally you are going to need to disassemble it to clean in between the plates, troubleshooting, and general maintenance. And while they are deceptively simple to take apart, the plates need to be put back in the correct order and orientation to function correctly. In this video, we're going to show you exactly how to disassemble and reassemble your plate heat exchanger. So, let's get into it. Before we get started, you're going to want to make sure you have gloves, a wire brush, grease, a wrench, a measuring tape, and paper towel or cloth. Today we're going to take apart a heat exchanger, show you how to take the plates out and clean them. This is a brand new heat exchanger, so it's not clean and I want to be probably going to be working on it, but the idea is the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is before I take it apart, I'm going to measure this distance in here, it's the A dimension. It's really important because we need to put it back to be exactly the same when we put it back together. So we'll just use my tape and it is seven and one eight inches, 7.125 inches, and it's the same pretty much on both ends. And it should be the same down at the bottom too. Yep. It's actually closer to seven inches. So I can write that down. A equals 7.125. Okay. So the way. The other thing I'm gonna do is put on gloves because these plates are really sharp and I don't want to cut my hands. I'm gonna take off the plastic. Covers. These are just on here to protect threads. If you're working on an old heat exchanger, these might be rusty. You'll know, take a wire brush and clean them off. Now, there's four bolts. We don't want to undo them all the way at once. So, we'll start down the bottom. Now, I'm going to go up to this one up top. Down. And we'll go up to the other side. Okay, so we got all the bolts, all the nuts off. We're just going to take the weight off the, the plate here to the left side. Rods out. Take the weight off, off the sleeve a little bit, slide this over. There we are. This is the movable line, this is the fixing. So the fixing has a different plate on the end. This one here. It's an end plate gasket. And you see it's got two holes at the bottom, block at the top. Yours might be a little bit different. But all the rings are solid all the way around each port, so nothing ever flows down here between this and the end plate. And then this is a regular floor plate. So the product comes in through the end here and it flows up here and up this side. Note they never they never cross the products never cross over, they always go up and up the other side or down. And being very careful not to mix these up because if we do, we're in trouble. So we have a full plate and an alternating full plate. This will be the other side. See, this one, the flow is going this way. And then another full plate, and there'll be about 10 of these.
So we get to this one. So this is plate number one, two, three, four. Plate number 13. And you see it's got the holes at the bottom are, are plugged. That means the flow, that makes the flow come in the bottom hit here and forces everything up and up this side so there's no flow across. Otherwise everything would just go straight through and up the bottom. The other side. So those are our plates. And so this one's gonna have it's a five pass, so it's gonna have one pass come here, one block plate, then over and blocked again, and then blocked again. And so it's gonna have four block plates, so we get five passes in here. So if we we're changing the gaskets or cleaning the heat exchanger, we start at this end, we take one plate out, we wash it, we put it back in, and then we do the next one and keep going through. If we take them all out and throw them in the bathtub or this wash thing at the same time, then we're going to get them mixed up and when we put them back together, it's not going to work. I'm going to show you what happens if I take one out and I mix it up like this one. I accidentally put it in upside down or put the wrong plate in. And then when we try to close it up, we'll see here, we've got this nice honeycomb pattern here and here, not there. It's three plates going the same way. So that means one of these plates is wrong and that's going to leak. It's not going to work. So we have to take that plate out and we put it in wrong. So now we got a honeycomb pattern. On the other end of the plate, you'll see there's just little ring gaskets on this one. This is the movable one. And this one has a gasket on this side, like all the others. Well, we have ring gaskets on this side to join them to these ports. So on the end, there's only that one has the ring gaskets on it. We have the port connections. You see it's the stainless steel all the way through, so not, no liquid touches the glue plate. And that's it for taking it apart. Now we'll put it back together. Make sure all the gaskets are on. We make sure we have a nice clean honeycomb all the way through. We slide this lift up, we slide this plate on like that, and we start putting up bars back in. So this one first. We'll put the we're ready to sleeve in. That's just again to keep the bolts nice and clean. Put a wash on. And there you have it. That is how you disassemble and reassemble a plate heat exchanger. If you have any other questions or concerns, you can reach out to us at 1-800-668-2268 or at sales at cpsystems.com. We'd be happy to answer any other questions you have.
Thanks. Until next time.